It is my privilege today, ladies and gentlemen, to present to you our valedictorian for the class of 2013, Mr. Blaise Eby. Blaise, please join me at the podium. Bless us with your words. Well, here we are. The big day, graduation day. And just look at all these people who've traveled from near and far to help celebrate this occasion. Parents and teachers, friends and families, honored guests, and of course you guys, my fellow graduates. Thank you all for joining with us today. You know, it doesn't seem that long ago that we were only this tall, running around in elementary school, scared of the big kids. We didn't have Facebook to keep us occupied. <laughs> we had picture books like Where's Waldo and I Spy. Instead of playing video games, we'd play playground games like Grounders and Hopscotch. Life was simpler back then. So simple, in fact, that our greatest desire was to grow up. What were we thinking? But then middle school rolled around and things began to change. And for me, that involved even more change than normal. Because at the start of grade seven is when I moved here to Cairnport. It was quite a culture shock to say the least. I spent the first 12 years of my life living at a remote location on Vancouver Island in BC. I had to ride a speedboat across the ocean to get to school every day. No school bus for me. And my school was very small as there were only four kids in my grade. So moving here was definitely a big adjustment, and I was quite nervous about being the new kid in a big class full of people I didn't know. But as I soon discovered, there is no need to worry. You guys made me feel welcome and accepted almost immediately, for which I'm extremely grateful. And as I've been a part of this class for the last six years, I realized that my experience back in grade seven wasn't something that was unique to me. I've seen almost every new kid that has come to our class be welcomed in a similar way. It's this gracious attitude of hospitality that has become one of the trademarks of our class. And without it, I wouldn't be friends with some of the great people that I'm friends with now. And I wouldn't have all the great memories that I do for my two years at the elementary school. Memories like bonus bucks with Mr. Schultz, who remembers those. And uh, going skiing at Mission Ridge a couple of times, camping at Dallas Valley in grade seven, going up to Camp Kadish in grade eight, and of course, going to Edgar Bishon in Regina. Those trips are some of my favorite memories, not just from those two years, but from all 13 years of school. And then there was our grade eight graduation, four years ago, almost to the day. It was a day of celebration and transition as well, though maybe not quite as big as this day. But it was big enough, because going from the top of the food chain, it's a grade eight, down to the bottom, it's a little minor niner. It was quite a shock to most of us, I think. There were definitely lots of cool things about high school though, like the fact that we had a cafe in the school, and we could go down to the Bean and get a snack or drink whenever we wanted, or that we had spares, and that was pretty cool. And of course, we all remember Mr. Reed and his hydrogen balloon explosions. <laughs> they scared us pretty bad the first time, or maybe every time. <laughs> and then there's all the great memories we've had just from this year. Remember Gratitude to Dallas Valley? That was one of the funnest trips I've ever been on the high ropes, the paintball, swimming in the dugout, which actually wasn't that cold, <laughs> and uh, playing tag on the hay bales. And a few months later, we got on a bus for nine hours and headed out to Fernie for a real ski trip. Man, was that ever an improvement from Mission Ridge? <laughs> we actually got to ski on a mountain rather than in a giant ditch. <laughs> and the hotel we stayed in made us feel like we were living in luxury. For me, I think all 12 years of school prior to this one were worth it just for those two weekends. CHS knows how to treat their grads right. Which brings us here. Quarter after three, Sunday, June 16th, 2013, graduation day. We've come a long way since the days of recess and freeze tag on the playground. We're all older and wiser now. Well, we're all older anyways. And here we are, realizing that we've actually made it. We've reached the goal that we've looked forward to for the last 13 years. Well, let's be honest, we definitely didn't make it on our own. Our parents were always there, encouraging us, helping us, and cheering us on every step of the way, whether in sports, arts, or academics. 
And of course, we can't forget the teachers. These teachers here at CHS are so much more than just teachers, and we are more than just students to them. They really care about us on a personal level and will put in the time and effort to help us succeed. And not just succeed academically either, but they genuinely care about our personal and spiritual lives as well, and will do whatever they can to guide us and mold us to not only be better students, but better people. I know we wouldn't be the young men and women we are today if it weren't for the large contributions that our parents and teachers have made in our lives. So we are very grateful and appreciative of all that you've done for us. Well, now I'm at the part of the speech where I'm supposed to say something really inspirational, something you'll all remember and take with you as we leave this place and begin the next chapter of life. And I was thinking about it for a while, and nothing really profound is coming to me. So I figured I'd try something a little bit different. I don't know how well you can see this there in the back, but basically it's a Rubik's Cube inside of a mason jar. <clears throat> I first saw a picture of this on Facebook or somewhere, I thought, no way, that's impossible. It's got to be photoshopped or something. You may say, what's the big deal? You just dropped a cube in the jar. It looks simple enough. It looks simple, but what you don't realize is that one does not simply place a Rubik's Cube into a mason jar. <laughs> So when I saw the picture, I thought, that's impossible. Or at the very least, it's something I could never do. Because I knew that if you wanted to actually get a cube in there, you have to take it apart and then reassemble it inside the jar. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these things apart before. But basically, every little square is a separate piece. So to take it apart and then put it back together, it's a tricky thing to do under normal conditions. Never mind doing it inside a jar. Plus, my hands don't even fit in here. So I thought, there's no way I could ever get a cube in there. But then a few weeks later, after seeing the picture, I was bored at home and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try that. So I set to work, and as I expected, it was a challenging task, and it took a long time. <clears throat> and I felt like giving up a few times. But eventually I was able to reassemble the cube inside the jar. Then one day, as I saw this sitting on my coffee table, I thought, you know what, this kind of reminds me of life. Because I know that we will all run into many situations in life, if we haven't already, that will seem impossible at first glance. We will think ourselves inadequate. We will think, maybe someone else could handle this, but not me. This is too far over my head. But I just want to encourage you that even though a situation may seem impossible at first glance, there's almost always a way through it. <clears throat> so never give up, because God said that with him, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. So if you don't remember anything else I said today, please remember what he said. And now I just want to finish up by saying that even though our high school days have now come to an end, <clears throat> I believe the best times, most exciting times of our lives lie ahead. There will be struggles, there will be trials, but there will be blessings. So yes, this is the end, but not really, because the end is where we begin this next chapter of life. Thank you.